you did ask a question about, and I don't know if this is, would, would hiring companies prefer a PhD in any field plus some data science knowledge through a MOOC or a data science master's without definitely say um, a data science master's? Um, there are plenty of, there's, it's twofold, right? Um, I hear, I have heard from a lot of, especially smaller companies, um, if there's a PhD at the top of the, the chief data scientist, like the, the desire to hire another PhD in the similar field or a field that fits um, with something along with data science, whether that's computer science, statistics, bioinformics, um, physics, whatever, mathematics, um, that complement each other a little bit, they, they, that's like first design. All right, um, but a PhD in a field that's completely not relevant to data science doesn't help. It just doesn't help. Um, that I've I've seen it's kind of impressive. But I've had Stanford PhDs in mechanical engineering. I came place. Hmm, interesting. Because they have because they have no. They got some math. They have no real statistical big data skills, and I think that they're not. They've shown a capacity to obviously learn, and they're smart, and all that kind of stuff. But their their learning curve or the time to get them ready is um, I'm just not ready to go. A uh, person who's got a master's in, in data science or even analytics is closer. They can at least get on the team and start working with data, and then then work their way up. So. Um, a relevant master's over a non-relevant PhD is, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know how that, that helps or just discourages the PhD <laughs> who's irrelevant because you can't go backwards in time on that one but um well you gave some uh, some interesting uh advice earlier on on what to do with these uh with these older um you know people who you know who've been in 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 uh, other fields for a while so i think that's probably where the uh where the older uh, phds uh n you know need to look at uh, doing yeah and you know i think i think it's just becoming more you know there's there's such a shortage in general at, at the experience level like the older the older folks, you know, have a lot of business experience, so right. they're just missing some of the, the the pieces. So they can probably quickly ramp up, and then they bring a ton of value, you know, to the table. And in general, like just broad strokes here, like I just see the space like um, maturing. You know, like the larger firms that were behind because they're always behind when they want to see it, what everyone else does, and they're slow to change. Um, the Fortune 100s and even 500s, um, they're, they're getting their act together now and they really know what they want, what they need, and thus, if you bring the skills to the table, regardless of age, gender, or anything, they're, they're gonna hire you. Um, you know, it's in the beginning, it was a little bit more of, we don't really know what we want. And so we're better risk management again. Get the guy or woman from Google, <laughs> frankly, or Facebook, or somewhere where we know they know what they're doing or they can help us figure it out. Um, and I, I mean, I worked on, I worked on a, a number of chief data scientist roles at, at some Fortune 100s early on, like in 2013. And and that's literally the approach. Like the CEO is like, we need this. I know we need this. I'm not really sure how we'll use this, but um, you know, get me somebody from some known company. And those people from those known companies did not want to go to the middle of the country <laughs> to a stodgy, not stodgy, but you know, giant firm that wasn't that hip or cool, and um, start something where there was almost no direction. Um, you know, and so. Now we're three years later, and and things have been figured out, and um, and it just creates a more normal situation for recent grads, for for older folks transitioning, for everybody, because there's just more clarity about 
how the, the structure of the group, how they're going to approach business problems, what they really need and what they don't need. And so you don't need as many unicorns anymore. You need pieces, and those pieces need to work together. You know, and that's where we're seeing the data engineering role and the data scientist role separate more and but work together and not one person who needs to do it all. Right, right. You know, and people can, people can get more specialized, focused, and uh, I think it's going to result in, in a better situation for, for everyone uh, long term. And, you know, this thing is normalized. So. Yeah, really good, anyway. really good advice. Yeah, and wow, thank you for giving us so much of your time, Ted. This is uh, this exceeded my expectations. I'm sure that it's going to do the same for all the listeners here. Um, now, yeah, I know you do have a blog where you guys regularly publish um, information that's primarily of use to the data data science job seekers. Um, that's at StarbridgePartners.com. Is that true? Yes, uh, at StarbridgePartners.com. It's one of the main, main tabs off of it. And, um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the content that you'll see up there is, is generally made for um, more of this, this audience, more of the newbies, more of the business people, uh, sort of like what's hot, what's new. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of the content is things that, that I wanted to uh, sort of read up on and see, you know, to learn. Uh, really, and um, one of the things that I did want to mention to uh, to this group too is we we've worked with a, a data science friend of mine who um, he's is uh, basically we've gone out to the web and we're we're scraping all the internships that are out there and going to create um we have a spreadsheet that we're going to send out and uh, people maybe sign up for the email to get it. Uh, and also data scientists, data analysts, data engineering jobs, not just our jobs. Um, we'll promote our jobs where we need to promote our jobs, but we, we're we trying to find a, a, another value-added thing. Like I said, that I can't necessarily help uh, a ton of, of recent grads right off the bat other than to give advice like these kinds of things and to, if I can, collect and share internships and, and things like that that may help them. Uh, and that's kind of what we're, we're trying to do is uh, help people now and, and then we'll get them, try to get them jobs later. And of course, you know when they when they do pop up, we're we're more than happy to help. But we think uh, so that'll be forthcoming. Uh, we have it. We have the internship one, which I'm sure a lot of the audience is is uh, pretty interested in, especially the ones that haven't graduated yet. Um, and I'll I'll share that with you, Mark, and we'll we can get that out to uh, to everybody. And um, it'll be kind of a regular thing, maybe every couple weeks. So. Fantastic. That sounds like it's going to be an incredibly valuable resource. So thank you in advance for doing that. Sure. Well, once again, thank you for all your time and all your great information. Uh, I know that it's going to give a tremendous amount of value, and we look forward to seeing, uh, you know, seeing your blog posts and this new, uh, this new internship uh, job bulletin board that you talk about. Right. Well, everybody have a, a great new year and be safe and uh, happy hunting out there. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Ted. Thank you very much.